When it comes down to all of this outrage regarding the murders of black men by white police officers and non-black people, I have to wonder, is this outrage about these black men being killed by white cops and non-black people, or is this outrage really about black men who fit a certain narrative being killed by white cops and non-black people? Because when I look at these high-profile cases like Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, Eric Garner, Michael Brown, and even Trayvon Martin, it clearly shows me that it, it, there, there seems to be a bit of a pattern here regarding the outrage black people have regarding who was killed and the story that revolves around how these black men were killed. Because it seems like in most of these cases, a black life only matters because they, are, they were killed, one, by a white cop or a non-black person, and two, because these black men's lifestyles pretty much fit a pattern and a profile that follow a certain narrative. And when I look at these profiles, you know, your Alton Sterling who was standing outside of this Arab-owned store selling these illegal DVDs, your Eric Garner who was standing outside of a foreign-owned beauty supply store selling these loose cigarettes, your Trayvon Martin who was alleged to have been outside outside of curfew, and your Michael Brown who was pretty much alleged to have stolen some cigars to go smoke up. All of these stories seem to fit a certain narrative regarding black life. And that narrative regarding black life tells us that the black lives that matter to black people seem to be the lives of dysfunctional um, African American men who pretty much were terrorizing the black community. And I have to ask a question there. Are these the black lives that we want to protect? Now, I understand all life is precious. And we have to look at that and say to ourselves, you know, why is it whenever these black men are out here and following the narrative, this narrative, we have all these black people going out to march and protest? But I have to wonder if a working class black male, you know, were murdered by these police officers, would there be the same outrage? Would there be the same anger? Would these black people be out here marching and protesting? Would we see Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson going to march and protest over a black man who was educated, hardworking, professional, family man? And would we see Black Lives Matter taking to the streets over the life of a hardworking, educated, professional family man? Would we see black leaders getting outraged over the loss of life of a working class black male? Well, we see people making multiple YouTube videos over the life of a working class black male. And the reason why I ask that question is because when it comes down to our good brothers in the black community, these are often the most marginalized members of black society. These are the least respected members of the black society. These are the least regarded members of the black society. When it comes down to decent black men, I don't know if there would be that type of outrage that type of anger, that type of march and protest. Because it seems to me, with this whole Black Lives Matter movement, which was started by black women, pretty much they are choosing the black man that fits their narrative. Same thing with this white liberal. They're choosing the black male who fits their narrative. And this black male pretty much is the one that they feel comfortable with. This is the story they want to tell, that this black man who they see is being wronged by society but they don't want to take a look at balanced picture of how these guys behave before these tragedies happen. Now, I don't I look at quite a few of these cases and yes, there was excessive force used. But I have to wonder again, if these black males were regular working class Joes, would these same black people be outraged? Would they be irate? Would they be taking to the streets? Would they be valuing that black life? Because when I look at the decent black men in commun in black communities, Again, they are the most invisible, the most marginalized, they are the most um, ostracized in black society, and they're the most reviled people in black society. A decent black man, I, I have to wonder, would he get the same equal treatment? Would, he be, would people be outraged? Would they be willing to march and protest? 
would they be willing to try to fight to get him justice? Would there be international outrage over his mistreatment? Because this is something that most black people, it just, it's not something that they're thinking about. Because when I think about these movements, it seems to be they get a poster child who fits a certain narrative. And you have everybody running to support them. And it clearly shows me what type of black man they want to support. Because we look at, again, primarily who is part of the Black Lives Matter movement. It's mostly black women. And it's being led by the former baby mamas or former girlfriends and single mothers who raised this black male. And this black male pretty much fits the narrative that makes them feel comfortable. It's not about getting about showing the value of black, of a black man's life even from a comprehensive perspective. It's about finally telling us that this black male who was not who didn't value his own life mattered and they, that's what I look at it as. Um, these black men who they put up as the face of their movement, you know, they all fit a certain narrative. They all came from a certain way of life. It's not like what would happen with Emmett Till, who was just an innocent 14-year-old boy who pretty much came from down south. He didn't understand the culture of the Jim Crow South, and he became a victim of a white male who was pretty much a simp and angry that his white wife um, pretty much got whistled at. Instead of him taking the high road, he decided to terrorize, to terrorize the community and then torture this, murder this boy. In that case, you look at it and go, yes, there was there, there, that was an outrage. That was the type of, you know, black man that you could galvanize a movement behind. But when I look at these black males, they fit a narrative that makes the white liberals feel comfortable about black people. And because they make black the white liberals feel comfortable about, about black people, they want to tell you that black lives matter, but in a passive-aggressive way, they're showing the world that you really shouldn't value black life and the black woman herself is showing that she really shouldn't value black life because she's pretty much putting the lowest seed black males at the bottom of society and then trying to tell us that they have a value. And yeah, they do have a value, but as I see it, you know, this movement pretty much fits a certain narrative and tells a certain story about black men that we really should take another long, hard look at. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.